I'm headed to Sharp Tour today, which is just up here, and it's got, uh, I want to say, uh, Dartmoor's version of the sycamore gap tree, uh, probably the hawthorn gap tree, it's probably not as impressive as the sycamore tree, but I want to go and take a photo of it anyway. I've seen it from the roadside a few times, and I've always thought, is it the composition, is it, it like it's up on a big tour, so I, I'm, I'm not sure whether I can get up there and get a composition up there, but it's something I wanted to challenge myself to get today. But I've just come down from this direction, so right up over here is a car park, and I've walked down through here, and I've been greeted with the absolute perfect location. It's almost, uh, it's too good to be true. So we've got, so we've got this awesome tree. I'm not sure whether it's an, uh, one of those little oak trees that grow on Dartmoor. They have um, these areas, Whitsman's Woods is one of the uh, more famous ones where they don't grow very high because of the moisture. I don't know if, but if you know in the comments what type of tree that is, let me know because I have no clue. We've got a stream here that goes right down to this dead tree and it goes all the way down through. So a lot of stuff going on here and there's a few decent trees behind that. Let me just show you because I stopped here to take an image of this, this tree here. Um, and there's just so much, there's so much going on here that I don't know what to take a photo of. And I think this is gonna be awesome in the uh, summer for insects and maybe autumn for mushrooms possibly because it's quite damp down here. and. Uh, I reckon this could be a good location. So um, you got all these trees here and then there's a little bit of a waterfall going on there, nothing major, little cascade. Um, but this is the tree that I want to take a photo of quickly. And I've had a little mooch round. The compositions, they're, they're okay. If I take it from, if I take it from this angle, I'm gonna end up with all this background then I think that'll be too distracting. And if I take it similarly to this way, I'll have all this background. So what I've opted for, um, I've opted, I'll show you up here. So my tripod. So what I've opted for is to come down this way and I'll talk you through the composition. I'm actually talking on my phone because numpty that I am forgot my camera, my vlogging camera's at home. So good old iPhone. So we're doing on that. So compositionally, what my plan is, as you'll see the dead tree that's behind this, I wanted to eliminate that. So I could have come across here, but you're gonna get the separation from this part, but you're gonna get the dead tree. So what I thought was my cunning plan is to get the, it's not a stream, but the water that comes down here, use that as a leading line into the tree and then have the tree and then maybe possibly a little bit of the outside of the tree, I'm not sure, of, of the bushes on the left there and maybe that stream coming down. Uh, maybe it'll look good, maybe it won't, um, but I won't know until I get back and have a look. Edit it up. So the composition is that. So the settings for this shot are going to be, uh, so we're on uh, 40th of a second, F7.1, ISO 100, and I am, well, I was before the light changed. I'm underexposing this image by one stop because since this camera came back from uh, Canon, from repair, they calibrated it. And since it come back, every time I expose correctly or to the right, it always comes out overexposed. So I don't know whether that's, look at that, that's supposed to be correctly exposed on there. As you can see the little line, I don't know if this camera's picking it up but that's supposed to be correctly exposed. So I'm, I'm having to underexpose my images to get a decent exposure or what looks decent to my eye. So that's my composition, that's my settings. I am using the 24 to 105 lens and I'm at a focal length of about 35 mil. So it's, it's, it's looking good in the back of the screen, but like I said, when, when I pop the image up on the screen, you'll, you'll know whether it's turned out okay. But yeah, so I'll pop that up, I'll take that photo and then we'll head up to the Hawthorn Gap Tree.
Okay, so I have come from here, the car park, to here, and we're at Sharp's Tour. Uh, unfortunately, as I said, there's no, um, there's no, I haven't got my action cam with me, so I haven't got the tripod, I haven't got the, uh, the I can't mount anything to the chest strap, I can't, I can't do any B-roll, I can't prop the camera anywhere, so you'll just have to imagine some epic B-roll coming up here and just pretend you see me walking up so just I'll let you think of that for a second while I head up to the uh, composition that I'm after. Oh we've made it. Uh, the Hawthorne tree up on Sharp Tor, uh, the huge huge tree that I saw from the road in the gap of the, the rocks that you could see is uh, a little bit smaller than I thought it was going to be. Um, yeah so these are the uh, rocks and the other rocks and the gap is very very not big so i'm going to set up a composition it's probably not going to be well it's definitely not going to be the one i wanted um but i'll set up a composition again no b-roll and uh i'll just set it up and be back with you in a sec i've just got to go and get my gear which i've left all the way down the bottom of these rocks so i'm going to go and get that quickly um yeah and make the best out of a bad situation shall we uh, see you in a sec. Right, so compositionally, um, coming to the edge of the rocks here, I can't really go any further, um, but I have to come all the way to the edge to get this composition because the uh, dopey person that I am uh, forgot my 40, uh, 17 to 40 lens, and I've only got the 24 to 105, so I have to come quite far back because I was anticipating being all the way down here to take a shot but um yeah it's not as not as big as i thought which disappointing but not the end of the world uh, i'm gonna get a couple of images uh, one from this angle one from straight on maybe one from the right and then maybe a couple closer up and i will i will pop them up on the screen when i've taken them and uh yeah they're all going to be handheld settings will be 7.1 uh, for the f-stop it'll be probably all at 24 mil uh, end of the lens just because i need that much uh width just to get a decent image and the, all i say 100 and the shutter speed will vary depending on where i'm focused and what lights in the sky so that will be probably between 60 and 100 200 um depends on what it is uh i'll pop the images up on screen let me know what you think in the comments <laughs> So thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you like those images and we'll see how this video plays out with the, without the B-roll, whether it looks any good or not. And I'll catch you on the next one.